Hello and welcome, my name is Trismegistus and this is Factorio. This is my Let's Just Play Factorio series, where I just play Factorio, uh, without worrying about whether they update the game or anything like that. The reason we're over here is the plan, certainly the start of the episode, is to fill out this solar field even more. I'm guessing we'll probably end up taking most of this chunk up. I want to get a good, good sort of uh, power going while the game chunks through making us a bunch of modules. So if we fill out this sort of area The intent with these turrets isn't really to quite defend the base as such. It's just to repel initial attacks so that if some biters do come in, then we've got something to sort of keep them at bay, respond to the initial attack, give us a chance to run over, that, that sort of thing. We're really just about repelling any attacks at this stage. We're not, not setting up permanent defences or anything like that. But if we grab some of these modules it's made uh, for us, uh, we can start distributing them round. I would quite like to make some electric engines. What's a practical or a way of doing that? I'm not sure practical is quite the right word. We obviously have engines stacking up over here. What do electric engines take? They take electric circuits as well. I have electric circuits there, so I could put up a little sort of mini production facility here, couldn't I? And pump some lube in. Grab some of that. Uh, no, you need to... Because we're doing that. You, to get lube in, you literally just have this little connector that it, that it provides you with. Uh, and that should let you put lube in. So this electric engine is in, intended for uh, sort of manual use, or, or personal use, really. But we need to get lube in. That's, that's the key thing. How can we do that? And how our power's looking now that we've put them extra ones down. So we're finally at a stage by the looks of things where green is so the steam engines are not kicking in at night. But I think it's fairly close right. Look at our power curve that we've is our electricity usage, basically. And you see our accumulators are sucking up a lot of the power, but as I say then spitting it out at night. But what we need to do right now is get some lube in. Now what I was thinking, wasn't I, was if we maybe take these out. Uh, and we put lube down the side here. So it would need to go sort of here somewhere. Yeah. Oh, probably need a pump. I don't imagine I've got any pumps. No. And scrap. This auto run placement thing with pipe underground pipes took ages to get in the game. The electricity one was there. Oh, I don't know, almost from the beginning. Well, almost since I started. No, in fact, it was it was there when I started playing. But uh, doing it with... Oh, dear. Look at this. Uh, we're probably better, actually, doing a dog leg. Maybe if we take this over here. This is a real mess. So we're going to have to be in there, aren't we? It's not going to reach, so oops. So that's going to be a dog leg. Then we want to be, I'm guessing that won't actually reach over. No, not quite. So if we pop this in here, 
Oops. Yeah, it used to. It did it from with electricity poles, say from when I started playing. But uh, it was ages before they did it for pipes. So you have to manually place the pipes at the required, you know, distance, maximum distance, or you know, wherever you wanted to go. It's actually a very good indication of. I mean, the devs are. I think I've mentioned this before. They they play their own game a lot and like their own game. So they, you know, when they see quality of life stuff. So that will trickle out some electric engines for us that we can use to make some legs. Uh, we also we would also need some blue circuits. Shall I put some blue circuit production here somewhere? Uh, so if I, because I'm going to need acid to do that. Oh, acid's over here, isn't it? So that wouldn't be too difficult to move over because they need red and green circuits which we are producing up here so perhaps if I plot down a bit of space uh, I would do the circuits Except I've done that the wrong way around, haven't I, really? Because really I want the blue to come out here and the red and green to go up. Yeah, that's better. Uh, so we want... Uh, Red coming in there, green coming in there. So they're a bit starved of copper, aren't they? So if we boost the production of copper via modules, so one of each, I think, that'll help a little bit. It's not able to empty them actually that's that's the real problem I think so what we can do where's the instant there we go is we can put stack inserters on here and that should then fill up the line I could also manually build a bunch of fast belt Fast spell, what it effectively does is, I mean, it effectively gives you sort of double the throughput. Through throughput. Did I use all of that? You have to be a little careful though, because um, uh, yellow inserters can struggle sometimes to take items off a of fast spell. I don't think that is far, fast spell there, is it? Hmm. But are you quick enough to fill up? So I could stick them a couple more on the bot on the top here, I think. So that's now over to output. Okay, and we get a few free ones. This is all super stacked up, which is lovely. We increased our red uh, circuit production. Not to a point where it's really sort of uh, why you're not producing anything because I didn't hook the acid up, did I? So here we go. This is our blue circuits coming out. 
So we will do our usual tricks. We pop, oops. Pop down a box. It will fill with oh wait, no, just the one stack, I think. Okay, so that's producing blue circuits. How many do we need for a pair of legs? We need, only need ten. Okay. We also need thirty engine units. It's a ridiculous number of electric engine units. <laughs> I'll pop some of these in here, get rid of them. Uh, inventory. So we can make some legs. We should also make... Well, when, the, well, when those are finished, uh, we'll have a look-see. How big they are. Yeah, so we can fit a couple of solar panels in there. Oh. Might as well. See how quick we are. Or what? See, we've already boosted our speed. I've only got one set of legs. Uh, so if I grab... Shall I do some more solar panels? Uh, yeah, so I've got two solar panels. I so say I don't tend to bother ratioing out uh, all of the... You know, the power and batteries and all that sort of stuff. Uh, oh, I need solar panels, uh, accumulators as well, don't I? There's a couple of stacks of them. Uh, one of the reasons I don't is because, you know, legs can drain it quite quickly because they, they are quite power intensive, but you do a lot of standing around. You, you know, you sort of dash to a place like this and you know, dash over here so that'll sloop away at our batteries. Oh, it now gives a percentage, does it? Oh, okay, that's nice. Yeah, it sloops away our, our battery, and then but then I'm just going to basically stand, or not stand here, but not move it as much as it were. Okay, let's go and put those back. It just it fills that out, so just gives us a little bit, little bit more wiggle room. Circuits. We should probably add some more. That'll increase our copper demand even more. Uh, are these in? These are in, should be in our blueprint. There we go. Uh, so we'll pop that there. Oh, am I? Up? Oh, of course it's the blueprint is. What you can actually? Ah, we have an attack. We have an attack. First attack. So, has that come from there, or have I got some griblies in this area? Because what could well have happened is they've come in and colon. Uh, look at that. You see that? That is a classic site, in fact, and that is as well. Although that's on the edge, so it may not be. But then that's covered by radar, so there can't be anything there. No. That is a classic sign of a base, a nest having been established, because what's happening is however many. And it might be quite big because it's across two. However many bases are there, they're sucking up pollution. So you get this gap. In your pollution so that's a classic sign that we've got some some nests a colonization there so we need to sort that out soon uh, one of the, what I was going to say is you can upgrade the, the blueprints uh, with the blueprint planner but I'm not going to do that because it would upgrade everything So shall we head up and see what's going on over in that area? I could actually show you turret creep with lasers, couldn't I? So it's not, I don't know if you can see here actually, because I've put that copper down uh, and it's nowhere near enough to supply all of that really. Um, I could put priorities on these, couldn't I? Which will sort of fill the green circuit, you get sort of oscillating patterns where effectively, so this will divert basically all of the copper into green circuit production, but because it's then starved in the rest of the base, it will cause a lot of the things that are using green circuits, which also use copper themselves, to slow down, or it will cause them to fill up or, or whatever. And that will then cause green circuits to back up, and then once they're backed up, copper will back up, and that will cause it to go there. But also, I mean, you also get the effect 
once this is sort of full as it were then more will come through it like that so you've got a gap there where it was basically sort of back filling the line and then back pressure creates or pushes more through so you shouldn't worry about empty lines too much unless it is basically continuous if you're using 15 items a second in your production then the belt is going to empty oh look we've had some things going on there as well i didn't spot them maybe i've got the ah uh, here you go so this is filling up, showing us some nests. So, so what it's doing, it's producing... Oh, we're getting medium biters as well. Okay, It's producing biters from the pollution. So it's effectively, effectively the sort of resource for biters is pollution in a, way, a weird way. I say I'm terrible at driving the car. What we can do is hook up this power line, whoops, and run it over. Hopefully an attack won't come as we're doing this. Drop it there. And sort of here. And I don't know, here. And I can plop some laser turrets down okay now, as I say there's a good chance that uh, they will because they are very power hungry uh, but they will um, use up sort of a lot of our accumulator charge as we're, as we're fighting so there's a good chance we'll have to sort of switch to have I got my shields on no have, I have not got my shields on or shield. I've only got one, haven't I? So let's pop that on. So we're a bit more protected. So laser turret creep, basically the difference is that you need... Have I got a military one I have? The difference is that you need power. So you have to take power lines with you. With normal turret, you, 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 know, you can just place them wherever. So let's drag them over. Now we have we're you know we haven't buffed uh, lasers too much, so it's one of the reasons they. There's our repair packs again. They sort of didn't really respond. Also, I mean three turrets isn't really enough to do that, but. Um, what I eventually, what, what I do if I'm creeping eventually, once we've got bots, is you can basically um, plop down stamps with, you know. Oh look, a bunch of spitters coming in. Oops, I got zapped then. So our trees going to be a problem here. I think they are. So we'll take out these trees. Having sort of defence in depth, as it were. So multi-layered defence is one of the key things. Is that a medium? Sp oh, it's a medium one. Okay. He'll be a bit of a bugger to kill. We will try and hit him with some fire. So yeah, fighters are not very sort of resistant to fire. They do kind of get... Did they zap him? I think they zapped him. Let's just go and shoot this. 
Cool. So what's basically happened there is that uh, uh, the one of these nests has, or maybe several, but one of these nests has um, essentially made a decision, and it's obviously you know a code governed decision. It's one of the things you can play. You can play with the settings, how frequently they make that decision, and things like that. But they've made a decision to create a colony. And what happens is it, it collects together a whole bunch of um, biters, and that then is a colony group. And it will the game will assess areas that it thinks are suitable for colonization. It used to be that it, if there was some human structure, something I put down, it would ignore that area. But that led to people effectively cheesing the game by putting down power poles just all over the place. And that would prevent the biters from doing any expansion. So they, they don't do that anymore. But they do factor in, you know, like water and stuff like that. So obviously either this group or this, you know, this set, this set of nests or that set of nests has said, right, we'll send out a colony and we'll, you know, this is a good spot to do it. And so the biters come down and what happens is they spawn then into nests and worms. And it's a completely, well, it's not, I don't know if it's completely random, but it's basically a random process. So maybe they send out, how many, we had two nests, was it? No, three nests and two worms, I think. So effectively five of the biters, and I think they actually group up, so maybe like two small biters can make a mess, a, a nest, and, and you know a medium biter makes a worm, that sort of thing. But what type of worm and stuff it gives you, so small, medium, large, behemoth, is uh, randomised, but it's also factored by the evo evolution level. So it won't, as far as I know, won't give you behemoth worms uh, until the evolution factor is quite high. But the type of nest, because there are two types of nests, there are biter nests and spitter nests. Biter nests only produce biters. Spitter nests can produce both biters and spitters. And there's like, and it's like a factored chance. So basically, there's X percentage of producing a biter or a spitter from, you know, by a spitter nest, and it will produce one according to those statistics. But it uses pollution to do it. The biters and spitters, I used to think they used to look fairly cute. I mean, not in a you know, properly cute way, but in a sort of a, they weren't uncharming, shall we say. So what we'll do, we'll put in a, a radar up here. So that'll help us keep an eye on this area better, that, that, that thing. And so this is what I mean about defending the pollution cloud. Uh, really, I should go out and put some... Because the, the way... Oh, no, there's some trees there, so that's probably absorbing. But the way this is set up, or, you know, overlapping, some biters... And, you know, you saw that distance. It's not a long distance that they moved. So, you know, these guys could easily send out some colonisation nests. Right, so, are we going to do some trains? I mean, we might as well. Where is our nearest copper? It's a real big one there, that's a beauty. And that is our closest one, isn't it? It's quite near some big nests, so we could make them quite angry. Is there trees? There's no trees either. But then there's also that crew, so that's... It's quite a good area to, to get ourselves down into. So that's six million and that's two and a half million. Oh yeah, I'm tapping that on there, so there is that as well. And I'm putting that in early. Yeah, so it's not quite as little iron as I thought. Okay. Oops, I thought we were in the car then. So I will drive over. So how are we gonna do our um how are we going to do this? Well, I, I might as well take out these cliffs themselves. So I'm thinking we probably want our train station here, would be easiest. But that does mean taking out these cliffs as well. Just give, us, give ourselves a bit of an easier, easier line to go down. So if we put the station here, and then we have all of our... Uh... 
because I want to um, balance them. So if we put a balancer sort of here. In fact, actually, uh, I can probably put it at like that, can I? No. But I could put it like this. So if we build a station and we build our locomotives, did I pick up the carriages? I didn't, did I? What a plonker. Ah. What I'll do then, I'll fuel that up. I'll put down a, in fact, I might take the station out the top here. That's probably a bit of a better arrangement. And we'll put the station, where is the, where did the station go? There it is. There. What's that called? So, whatever that is, these are like back, early backers for the for the game. Uh, you used to be able to get, uh, pay for a, a, you know, to have your name as one of the random list. It also names uh, labs after them. Uh, so if this is coal, no, iron pickup. Iron ore pickup one. Do I normally, I normally put that first actually, didn't I? So I can tell pickups from drop drop offs usually. Pick up iron ore one. You can change your colours and stuff. So it, you know we can make this sort of blue for iron ore maybe. I don't normally normally I end up I fiddle about with it to start with, and you can actually copy and paste. Um, so we're going to pick up iron ore one, and the condition is going to be full cargo. Uh, no, it isn't. It's going to full, full cargo or time passed. Uh, and we'll set it to say a minute. So if it manages to fill up, fill up with the iron ore that's here, then it will uh, go home. If that is taking too long, then it will uh, come back. And so you go. Uh, yeah, then it will come back. Um, so we're going to have carriages here, aren't we? So actually, this being there is probably not a bad idea as such. Okay, uh, what I'll do then, you can do it in the car, but and a lot of players they'll they'll use the car as like proper mobile storage, uh, you know, you know, to take the stuff from one place to another. I don't tend to bother with that because, as I say, I'm not the biggest fan of. Uh, the car. What I would normally do actually is is um, drive the train up and down. So what we'll do, we'll try and take it. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna end up hitting this inevitably. But what I'm thinking is we go through this gap here. So we need to be sort of here. So if we are lined up with that icon, we should be able to get through. Oops. So sort of there. But one thing you can do is because of the wires, because because it controls with wires, you can line your cursor up with something, and then just like so, I'm pressing the D key, and that will show me whether I'm going to hit anything or roughly. So we may well hit that there, but we're going to fit through that gap, and that's what I'm really after. So I might take this one one thing back to try and avoid that. Power pole. I so say what I normally do is if you get in the train, you can just drive along laying the track. Nope, we have missed it. There we go.
So this is literally just a train to bring in ore. So because we're going to have one train going up and down, certainly for the moment, we're not actually going to bother about things like signals. But in terms of unloading this, all we really want to do is sort of feed it into this system here for the time being. I should really, I, I think I'll rearrange all of this as well. How are we doing with time? So I need to grab those carriages, don't I? Uh, no, let's do a actually, actually let's do a four carriage train. But I'll make make it. Oh no, let's just do a one header. So it'll be a one four one train. Um, all sorts of ways of doing this because it's a single train on a single line. What I'll do, I've decided, is I'm gonna I am gonna have a single uh, thing, and I'm not gonna do you know signals on it. If we suddenly decide we want suddenly but if we decide we want you know bigger production um yeah that's taking here uh, and we want not bigger production we want more resources coming in and we want a second train then i'll, I'll add uh, the sort of uh, return line to it basically so so this is literally going to be a one way not no, it's going to be a two way sorry uh rail system but with a single light train on a on your track, you don't actually need signals. Because all signals are really there for is to stop trains crashing into each other. Right, so that's that. So what I can do... Because we've got the coal here, which is really convenient, you see. Because we can tap off the coal for our... To, to fuel the train, basically. So what I'll do... I'm going to drive the train up so I need fuel. And um, particularly now that we're not using, um, I should put in a station actually, that will make our life easier. I didn't actually think I would get this far in this episode, which is why I'm a bit sort of uh, seat of the pantsing it. Uh, so if we call this drop off, actually uh, what I'll do, I'll copy that. Just put drop off. And we want. Is it. Oh, there. The colour's still in the memory, basically. Right, so we drive up and try not to hit our other train. So control on um, trains is. It's the also tank controls. But of course, you're not. You're, fix, you're on a fixed rail. So basically, only. Uh, you know, W and S, so W is accelerate and S is, is, is reverse. A and D don't do anything unless you're at a, at a junction. Uh, if you're at a junction, then it, you can use those to take down that particular side chute. So if you had a, a junction here and you're driving down here, um, the uh, I've made this difficult for myself. So the A key would take you left. Yeah, so you would go down that branch. Um, and whereas, you know, that is not considered a, a deviation so W would just keep you going down there uh, right, and we want the other one at the other end and color that in fuel it up uh, actually this so we want about how much have I got in here Yeah, so we've got about 75 in each. Uh, the first thing it'll do is, is like fuel up, basically. So what we're going to do is fuel our carriages. Our carriages we're going to set, using the middle mouse click, we're going to set to only accept our iron ore. Okay? And then I'm going to uh, right click on that. So shift right click on it and shift left click to set it across all of the carriages. Now, because we're on a single line train and, uh, you know, this is sort of unnecessary, but in case I get one of the inserters the wrong way around, and I'm just, you know, doing the shift right click, shift left click to paste the entire menu, uh, it just avoids, oh, I should have more steel, should I really? 6, 12, 18, oh, oh that'll be right. We probably need to start mass producing steel chests. Um, I've sort of... Not bothered with them till now. 
Okay, we want more. Am I going to have enough? No. Uh, yep, so put them in there. I'll probably run the power along the train track rather than have this snaky, snaky boy. Uh, but for the time being, I do want to connect it up. Just to see how things are going. So what I generally do, I often uh, have this sort of system here where it sort of splits it. Because what I'm trying to, what you're trying to do, basically, is load the train as quickly as you can. Right? So, because our wait condition is once it's full, or of course the time. Right? So what we're trying to do is split all of the uh, material coming in evenly across all of our possible uh, load points. Yeah, which is why we're using a balancer, uh, and then why we're splitting splitting up. Now you can have like stacks of splitters to evenly you know disagree across all of your things but I don't, don't generally bother I just slap in um, this split and what will happen is these it will fill up you know like a bit Gaussian curve basically so these will have less in um, but a, a wagon doesn't actually hold that much really it's 2400 uh, total because there's, there's um, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 but 10 by, oh no, it must be 2,000, is it? Because, well, these stack to 50, so you've got 500 along there, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000. Where did I get 2,400 from then? Don't know. Um, so yeah, we'll get 2,000 in each, which, but a chest, you see how that's four rows? So that's, oh, this is the, this is 2,400, because we've got eight there. Yeah, so a chest holds way more, and we've got six chests here. So there's potentially way more than six times as much material stored in these chests, and it can blast it in. Uh, what we would actually normally do for our sort of final station design is use stack inserters, because they can just slam it in really quickly. And you can literally have trains turning up and going, turning up and going, turning up and going, because you can get the material stored up, uh, particularly with speed modules on these and... Oh, that's what I was going to do, wasn't I? I was going to set up the speed module. Oh, put in the speed modules. That's why I was. That's why I'm a little bit sort of out, out of uh, order, as it were. So I have disconnected the power there, haven't I? So if I run it round. So as noted, the idea is that this is, roughly speaking, evenly distributing everything that's coming out of our miners, because you notice they're different lengths, so there's different production coming out of each. And of course these edges don't actually have much ore under them, so that'll run out a lot quicker than you know the ones here. So by using this balancer we can evenly distribute it across all of our uh, areas, and then hopefully fill up our trains pretty quickly. Yeah, because these... Um, chests are going to fill up basically at the same rate as these chests you know across the thing I don't think I've got enough wall but we need to sur basically surround this we can sort of use maybe so use these cliffs a bit um, yeah so I'll put in some basic sort of turret defense stuff. There's not a he heck of a lot of defenses. Maybe I should, if I leave, what I could do, I could put, pop in a uh, laser turret or two. J 
just as a sort of extra defense for our train. It's not going to be a huge train just to have two, two in. We can make some gates. I've not, not made any gates before, have I? Have I even researched gates? No, I haven't. Let's research gates quickly. That didn't take you that. What happened there? Gates, start research. Yeah, okay. Uh, so we'll just have a little gate, basically, for our train to, to go through. So I presume our train's now full, is it? Okay. Oh, I haven't finished this off. Which means we probably don't have it. No, we do. Yeah. Gates haven't finished yet. Okay, so what we will do, we will continue to add to this. So, ooh, look, it now gives. Where's that? I've not put this on the wrong side, have I? I've called them the same thing, haven't I? I didn't properly edit the, the name. So I'll manually drive it over. Yeah, so I've... I wonder why that, why didn't that take? So if I call this drop off, hit and apply change, now we should be able to, yeah, so we can go to drop off, and the condition here will be when it's empty. Now we won't put up wait, because in a sense it doesn't matter, you know, we, we don't mind if the train sits here until it's empty, you know, there'll be a balancer to ensure that um, any material that comes off uh, of the the train will be evenly distributed uh, as to where you know wherever it goes. So that's gates done. So we can put this onto automatic. No, go there. Okay. So we'll pull that to manual. The reason you have the trains on pull up automatically is so that you can properly align your inserters. Uh, it's not too much of a problem with um, you know ore drop-offs and, and those sorts of materials because the inserters can't really be misaligned too badly and it's pretty obvious you know where it will be it's more important with curves if you've got trains stopping around a curve it can get misaligned basically although inserters as I say are better at coping with it however pumps are not uh, if you're pumping stuff off of a train ensure that the entire train is on a straight um, certainly the station is not round a corner or anything like that because it just can't cope with the tiny fractions of um, misalignment basically okay well busy episode we uh, put in a bit of extra solar we set up some extra production of things we're going to need blue circuits etc we killed off our first incursion into our pollution cloud and we've started to set up you see all this pollution here miners are deliberately really dirty because the idea is that what the devs want you to do is engage you know set up a, a thing and it angers the biters and you have to defend it and you know it just makes the game loop a bit more sort of dynamic a bit more interesting yeah so and then we set that up that next episode i will set up the unload area and get the train system properly running and then we will put in these modules yeah so we'll call that an episode there if you've been watching i hope you've enjoyed it and you might consider coming back for another one i've been trisma justice this has been factorian thanks for watching cheers